Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I like to discuss the way Liz Truss, who's the gatherer of worthless post-Brexit trade deals, has joined the calls for the EU to just abandon the treaty that she and all other Conservative MPs said was a great oven ready deal without making a fuss. I'd also like to counterpoint this with the letter that she leaked on the issue of Brexit treks last year as well. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So uh, for those who don't know, because it's always worth pointing these things out, Liz Truss is not actually one of the thick members of the cabinet. Worth mentioning this because she carried out an interview recently where, as well as talking about Brexit, she was also defending the government's recent whitewashing, literally, of a racial discrimination report. Not only did this report find that there was no institutional racism in the UK, but that we were basically the least racist country in the world. Needless to say, many people, especially anti-racism groups, found a few flaws in the report. Trust tried to defend the report by saying that there were lots of groups, lots of people who had praised it, and she was challenged to name a single person, just one, outside of the government, who had done so. She said she couldn't think of any. So loads of people praised the report, so many in fact that she can't name a single one. Now in a situation like this, you could just think, well, she's not that bright, is it? Is she? she she's fallen into uh, an obvious trap, embarrassed herself. But on this occasion, it's got nothing to do with intelligence or ministerial capability. Doesn't matter how clever you are, there are certain positions you can't defend. You cannot defend such a ridiculous statement. She was ordered to make the statement. But she isn't a mindless Brexit minister. Sure, she's going along with it for the sake of her career. But she's also very careful to cover herself in a way that her more limited colleagues simply don't. Take the COVID herd immunity strategy debacle, for example. So other ministers have just denied that this was the official policy, even though both Boris Johnson and the chief scientific advisor went on television to talk about it. But Truss qualified her denial by saying it was never discussed in any meeting that she was involved in. Well, she's the International Trade Minister, so she needn't have actually been involved in any meetings where they discussed this strategy. So that's an easy out there. But anyway, Brexit. She's also been ordered to back up her unelected colleague, David Frost, please, for the EU to just drop the requirements in the withdrawal agreement, specifically border controls. Now, as I keep having to say at this point, it is, of course, impossible to do what she is suggesting and what they are all suggesting, and she knows it. It's impossible because if you have different customs arrangements, you need a customs border. Rather than keep repeating myself, I'll post a link to a really concise explanation of how a single market works. And this isn't just the EU single market, this is just any market. But the bottom line is that Northern Ireland has different customs arrangements to Britain. This isn't just a matter of international legal fact, even Brexit ministers don't deny that. So where you have different customs rules, you have to have checks and paperwork. It's really that simple. And we know that Liz Truss is aware of the need for checks and paperwork because last year, she wrote a letter to her cabinet colleagues expressing concerns that we would be inviting problems if we didn't have those same checks and paperwork procedures in place for goods passing into Britain. The idea was supposed to be that we would be applying checks when Brexit began just like the EU have. Then this changed to, ah, oh, we're not quite going to be ready for the end of the transition period. We're going to do it halfway through 2021. So there's going to be a delay of six months. Now, the government have already announced at this point that they aren't ready for this now, and so it's been put off until next year. And then at the end of this year, it may well be that they have to delay it again. And Truss, having no confidence in the ability of her own cabinet colleagues to have things in place for even July 2021, last July, wrote a letter with the following concerns if checks weren't in place. And she leaked the letter. She wanted the public to know she had these concerns. First point, she was concerned that we would open ourselves up to challenges from the World Trade Organization and hurt our reputation abroad. So she was saying that not having systems set up at customs borders to control those borders means you open yourself up to legal challenges and harm your international reputation. That is the consequence. 
Now, naturally, the EU don't fancy opening themselves up to legal challenge from others or having their reputation hurt. It is objectively, therefore, not at all reasonable for Truss or any other minister to expect the EU to take the same hit that she fears for her own country. Secondly, she expressed concerns about security risks with not having border controls. So she is aware that if you don't have border control, you invite security breaches against your territories. Just as in the first case, she is basically saying that the EU should accept security risks just to save the blushes of the Brexiteers. Again, using her own concerns can't be objectively a reasonable request. The third concern was uh, smuggling. No border controls means a green light for smugglers. Again, how is it reasonable to expect the EU to accept smuggling into their territory? So in Truss's own words, our own lack of border controls between Britain and the EU means legal challenges, damage to our international reputation, security risks and smuggling. This is what we're doing right now by not having our own border checks in place. So by Trust suggesting that the EU should also forget about border control, she is saying that the EU should also accept all of these things for the sake of a bunch of liars and charlatans who have been extremely rude to the EU and continue to be so. Not sure I'm seeing the compelling argument there, if I'm honest. But in dragging Liz Truss into this nonsense, you have to wonder what Boris Johnson is actually playing at. Like I said, there's no way that the EU can just abandon border controls. They know it, they're not going to. Odd that Brexiteers would even ask them to, as wasn't Brexit supposed to be about tightly controlled borders? Still not quite sure how people have let the government go from that to having our borders virtually completely open. Not only to goods and people, but also to the virus that has turned many lives upside down. I mean, I can understand how the government have sought to do this because their vision of Brexit was always impossible. And I don't just mean politically and economically unsuitable. I could say that about no end of conservative policies, both past and present. But their Brexit was actually impossible to deliver. So that once it was delivered, it would look nothing like their promises. That was obvious. What is not obvious is why so many people are just accepting the most obvious diversions from it. I mean, what did these Brexit leavers really want? If they wanted more tightly controlled borders, why aren't they going mad that our borders are right, right, wide open right now? If they thought we'd be getting loads better trade deals, why aren't they going mad that our trade deals are actually trashing our economy? If they thought it would be good for fishing and farming, why aren't they going mad that it's basically finishing fishing and farming off in many places around the country and hasn't actually improved it anywhere? But however the con is working, it is a con that is only going to work on a portion of the British public. But the British public have no further role to play in Brexit for four more years. You could understand it before an election. There isn't an election for years. And we can't carry on as we are for four more years. This can't be just getting ready for the next election. We need to actually engage with the world at some point. And it keeps coming down to this. We are going to need to sort out our border controls. I'm amazed the government aren't getting it in the neck for not having them in place now. But the longer it goes on, the more damaging it is for us. Liz Truss says we need the Australian deal so that we can break into the Asian market. We're not going to be doing that. We're not going to be doing it for the next general election, the general election after, the general election after that. The only reason I think the EU haven't already taken more robust action is because the government do appear behind the scenes to be working very genuinely on implementing the protocol, even though they publicly say they want to drop it. But that just means kicking the can down the road. At some point, they will have to show that they've deceived someone. If they are stringing the EU along, if they're just making a show to the EU that they intend to go ahead with the protocol and then they don't implement it, the EU will take action. If the government do go ahead with the protocol, then it's hardline unionists in Northern Ireland that will have been deceived. Yet again. They are unlikely to be impressed and will certainly not be cooperative. In fact, you almost wonder, at this point, if the government's plan is to kick the can down the road far enough to wait for the Northern Irish elections next year, see a Republican win, trigger a border poll, and even hope that the campaign for reunification wins, I mean, of all the mad possibilities, that is the one that seems the least mad right now. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, 
don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.